from Millville, New Jersey, and reaching around the world. New Life World Outreach Ministries presents His Word of Power with Pastor Richard F. Myers. Join us in a time of joyful worship, anointed ministry, and dynamic preaching from one of our Sunday morning worship services. It happens here on His Word of Power. Here is where I lay it down, every burden, every crown. This is my surrender, oh, this is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down, every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender, oh, I will make room. For you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Oh, I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. Yes, Jesus, to do whatever you want to. Here's where I lay it down. Oh, here is where I lay it down. Every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, yeah. Oh, I will make room for you, oh God, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Yes, I will make room for you. Come and do it, God. And to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. Oh, yes, I will make room for you. Oh, God. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you Tradition. 
opposition Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Your way is better Shake up the ground of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Your way is better Shake up the ground of all my tradition Break down the wall of all my religion Your way is better Your way is better And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to Oh, I will make room to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. before Jesus it's all about surrender you want you have a need you got to surrender it we surrender it to you Jesus oh we surrender it you got a need you got a need. you weren't beautiful and that you didn't belong in your own skin who said that you were all alone and that you're never gonna find love again so many little words so many little lies that have followed you all of your life looking for the truth look into your eyes and you'll see it's been In the arms 
1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, let's begin reading there at the 18th verse. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown language. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you today for your word. Thank you, Lord, that as we hear what you have to say to us, it's not my words that are important. It's what you speak through me and by the Holy Spirit to the hearts of those that say, Lord, here am I. And so I thank you, Lord, today that as we partake of your word, you will release the revelations, the understanding, the grace, and the knowledge to hear what the Spirit is saying. So I thank you for that now in the name of Jesus and all of God's people shouted, Amen. Amen. You know, we have a saying around here that we talk to you about all the time. And that simple saying that we use is this, if I can just get to church. If I can just get to church. And you know, many times we say that when we're feeling ill or sick, we're going through a tough time or whatever. We say that if I can get to church. And many times we say that to ourselves, but we don't know why we're saying that. We know we need to get to church. We know there's something going to happen there. And we have to understand, and what I want to share with you today, is that in church is the place where God manifests his edification to those who believe. Somebody please say amen to that. See, God has put his edifying process in the church so that all who attend can have the opportunity or be put in a position or in a place where his edification process begins to take place. You know, you come and you sit and you enjoy the worship, whether you watch or participate or you're a spectator or whatever, but you still get seed planted in you. And when you sit there in church, that seed of the Holy Spirit begins to profit you because the Bible says that everything God does profits us. And so when you're in the presence of other believers and you're sitting around other people who are going through struggles and battles, the united effort of us being in one mind and one spirit brings the edification process, which includes healing and deliverance and direction and guidance and everything else that we need. God brings that as we gather together in church. But in order for you to go to church and make it count, you have to identify with church. See, you got to identify to be edified. And when you identify, then you put yourself in a place where God can edify you. And I want you to know something. That's no different than any other organization you belong to. You can belong to Kiwanis and JCs and Rotary and all the other organizations. And when you identify as a Rotarian or a JC or whatever, then that identity brings you the benefits of that organization in your life. 
It's the same way with God. The only difference is God not only grants you the benefits of the kingdom here and now, but also in the world to come. Somebody say amen to that. And so the good news about that is that you've got yourself in a place, in a position where you are here in a church that is called a pental Pentecostal church. You know what that used to be called in the old days? Holy rollers. You a holy roller. You're a member of this church. You a holy roller. You're the people that other people talk about. Look at your neighbor right now and tell them, you a holy roller. <laughs> wow. You a holy roller. What does that mean? And you know what they used to say? They used to say this. They used to say, you know what? Them holy rollers, they roll down the aisles. We don't roll down the aisles. We just flip and flop at the altar. <laughs> Today, you saw people who were standing up one second and the next second they were down on the ground. What happened to them? They were being edified because the process of the Holy Spirit showed up. And here's what happens. When that happens, and it's a God thing, not an emotional thing, what happens is the supernatural comes in contact with the natural and the natural always gives way to the supernatural. Somebody say amen. And that's why you see people falling out. Not because somebody gave them a big hearty push or anything else. It's because the supernatural contacted the natural and we can't stand the fullness of the supernatural manifesting in us. Please say amen. And so what we want to understand is as a Pentecostal church, we have gifts that God has given us to operate in. He's given us the gifts of the word of knowledge, the gifts of prophecy, the, you, know, the, uh, the, you know all the gifts, the gifts of uh, the word of wisdom. He's given us the gifts of tongues and interpretation. He's given us those gifts as part of the edifying process of the kingdom. And so what we want to talk about today is just one of those gifts. And that one gift has great significance to you and I because it comes in two forms. It comes in the forms of personal edification and it comes in personal instruction and personal revelation to the body of Christ. And the two are different. When we speak or pray in tongues personally and privately, the Bible says that's to edify ourselves. Jude 1.20 says it builds up our most holy faith. And so we're at home and we're praying in another language. And let me explain something to you about this because it gets a bad rap in churches. It's not some spooky thing that comes out of areas. It is a gift from God. And the Bible says this, that all good things come from above. So then what he wants to give us in all of these gifts, the word of prophecy and knowledge and wisdom and tongues and interpretation and all that is gifts from God. And so all we've got to understand is that if it's a gift from God, it's got to be good for us. Somebody please say amen. So whatever that happens to be for you all, it's a gift that God has given you so that your life can be better while you're here on the, on the earth. Please, 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 please say amen to that. Amen. Say, I am telling you that in this fullness that God has for us, he has something that can only be gathered and achieved and assimilated in our lives when we are gathered together. I was thinking about this morning about all the different things that God has given us as his gifts. And I was thinking about the gift of tongues and what it means. And in the, in the fifth chapter of this uh, same uh, book of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 14, 5. It said, I wish that you would all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesy than he that speaketh in tongues, except, everybody say except. Yes. Except he interpret that the church 
may receive edifying. Let me explain to you. The moment you walk in the doors of any church that is in the fullness of Christ Jesus, the whole purpose that God has for you is you to walk out different, not just stirred, but changed, walk out edified, and what the burdens that you brought in here are deposited at the cross, and you walk out of here free and light. Somebody say amen. And so anytime we have a gift that's manifesting itself, that's done for the edification of us. And so in the church, we have this gift that is offered to us, the message in tongues and the interpretation of what's being said in another language for one purpose, to edify you, to edify me. Now, if you stop and think about it, how many times have you ever been at home by yourself and you were sitting in the chair and you were watching television and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you jumped up, gave a message in tongues, and interpreted it for yourself. Everybody that did that, raise your hand, please. There's one, that's it. Out of all these hundreds of people, one person. See, the gift of tongues for church is for the edifying of the body of believers. Please say amen. Now, there's two kinds of tongues in church. There's two kinds of messages. There's one that needs to be interpreted because it is for the body of Christ. But there's another one that gets prayed sometimes, and what it is, it is a manifestation of spiritual prayer. The Holy Spirit is praying through someone so that that can be the mind and the heart of God for the church. So if there's no interpretation, it's not that somebody necessarily missed it. What it is, is that it's God praying intercession. And in occasion, some people will even translate that so that our understanding will grasp it for the purpose of edification. Because everything God does for us as we gather together is for one purpose. And that is the edification of us. And the leader's responsibility, whoever is in charge of the service, it's their responsibility to know the difference of whether it was an intercessory prayer or whether it was a message in tongues that needed to be interpreted. And I will tell you this, it will always be at the proper time, at the proper time, at the proper time, so that everyone can be blessed and hear what the word of God is saying. Somebody please say amen. Because it is God speaking into your life. You say, well, every message that comes forth doesn't pertain to me. Oh yeah, it does. Just maybe not now. Maybe for tomorrow. Maybe for next week or next month. God doesn't do something for just the fun of it. Please say amen to that. God does it for a reason. Everything that he does. And he never stands up and just singles out an individual without it edifying. If I call her out and give her a word from God that God has given me, yes, it's directly for her, but she's going to get edified and she's going to get edified and he's going to get edified. Why? Because God is not a respecter of persons. He will minister to a person, but will edify everybody who hears what's going on. Somebody please say amen to that. And that's important for you to understand because anybody can speak into your life if you allow them. See, let me tell you how this works so, so, so you get a clear picture. Everyone that speaks into your life is not necessarily a God-inspired insertion into your being. Amen. So, <laughs> yeah, amen. You know what? I can offer you input into your life, not just based on what God is leading me to do. I can give you input. I can input into your life based on knowledge that I have. 
based on past experience that I have. You know, if you needed to know something about advertising, I wouldn't need to go to God, although I would, but I can tell you what to do in advertising because I was a vice president in a Madison Avenue ad agency. So any input that I put into you is based on that experience and that knowledge and that understanding that I had. And sometimes that's okay if you're seeking certain kinds of information. But when it pertains to your life and liberty, you want to make sure it's God speaking to you. Please say amen to that. I can remember we were in, in Playas, New Mexico. And they had, we had six weeks of services every night except Saturday, right? We were there every night except Saturday. For six weeks we were there. And after a service one day, a lady came to us, a couple actually, came to us and said, we don't understand something. And I said, okay, what? They said, we don't understand why that particular lady interpreted what somebody else said in a message in tongues. And I said, well, what don't you understand about that? They said, well, he gave the, or she gave the message in tongues and then this other lady, after a pause and quite a long pause, she stood up and interpreted what the person said. And it lined up, but when we see her out in the streets, she was living for the devil. You know what I'm talking about, Frank? Frank there shaking his head. I hope he's not talking about you. <laughs> I know he, <laughs> I, I love you. <laughs> what? What'd you say? I shouldn't have told her that? That was a secret between you and me? <laughs> so here's the deal. Here's, here's the deal. The lady that gave the interpretation was not given a message from God. She was given it from familiar spirits and she was living for the devil but was a plant for God to discredit the whole gift of that church. Amen. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful who you let speak into your life because everybody does not have good intentions for you in your life. Please say amen to that. You got to guard your heart because out of it comes the issues of life. Proverbs, it says that you got to guard what you allow people to input into you. And you better make sure that if somebody is speaking directly into the spirit of who you are, you better make sure they came from God. Because if not, you're going to face some turmoil and torture and torment. And you're going to be bombarded with all kinds of crazy thoughts. Somebody say amen, please. So you want to make sure you put boundaries and limits on whoever is going to input into your life because the very ones that you trust are the very ones who can do damage to you. Amen. If you're walking along the street and you see a drunkard there who's drunk or, or spaced out on drugs and he starts to give you advice and counsel, how many of you are going to take that counsel? Uh, see, most of us wouldn't. But what if it was Jesus' disciple who was there trying to get you a warning? That's why the Bible says this. Try the spirits. You know, so often we just write people off. And it's amazing the people that God uses. He He used a jackass to talk to somebody. That's what I, I'm only quoting the Bible. He used that to speak to the man of God. Now I'm going to tell you something. Most of us, we jump off of that donkey. <laughs> We'd start commanding them foul spirits out of that thing. We we get it delivered and turn it into a horse. That's why you got to try the spirits. The Bible says this. It says, try the spirits whether they are of God or not. 1 John 4, 1. So why do I need to do that? Because it's not what happens out here that either destroys me or builds me up. It's what happens in here. It's what happens down here. 
When this rules over this, I'm okay. When this rules over this, I'm in trouble. Why? Because the battlegrounds that we fight our battles in are not out here. I don't fight with Frank if we're having a disagreement, which we never do, because he always agrees with me and I always agree with him. <laughs> that, that's a joke. <laughs> we don't fight out here. You know where we fight? In our minds. You know what? When, when the altercation is over, whether we've made up or not, he goes his way and I go my way. And we sit back in our own lounge chairs and all of a sudden we start doing this. You know, I should have said this. You know, when he said that, I should have done this and reminded him of that. Anybody ever do that? We do that all the time. We allow our mind to be the battleground over something or someone who is trying to take control over who we are in Christ Jesus. That's why the Bible teaches us as soon as you're in an altercation, forgive. Whether you're right or wrong, forgive. Move into forgiveness as soon as you can because as soon as you say, I forgive them and you ask them to forgive you for anything that you've done to offend them, as soon as you do that, the charges are dropped against both of you and you're free and there's no more torment involved. Somebody say amen to that. And so all I've got to do is say, you know, I know you probably didn't mean it. You were probably having a bad day. So I'm just going to go ahead and forgive you. And the moment I do that, I'm free. Turn to your neighbor and say, whom the sun sets free. Whom the sun sets free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So when we come to church and somebody does happen to give a message in tongues, here's what happens. Whatever they say. And when they're finished, this is what happens. Somebody going to interpret or what? Martha, we've been waiting for 30 seconds. What's going to happen here? And we start squiggling in our seats because we're waiting for somebody else to give the interpretation. And God allows that. God does allow someone to give you a message, give a message in tongues and somebody else interpret it. God allows that for a reason. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth is established. Say amen to that, please. In other words, what that means is this. It means that he is allowing someone else to verify that he is speaking. And he's speaking his mind, his word, his way, so that we all can be edified in him. Say amen to that. But the truth of the matter is this. The truth of the matter is that Jesus said, I don't testify of myself, John 15, 26. It says, when the comforter is come, who I will send you from the Father, he is the spirit of truth. And so what happens is when somebody is giving a message in tongue or giving the interpretation, here's the key point of that. It's still God edifying his body of believers. Somebody shout amen to that. Because everything he does, not everything we do as human beings, not everything we do as men, but everything that God does in church is for the edification of his children and to draw the unsaved to become children of the living God. Wow. So now that tells us something. That tells us that when God is in charge of a service, the whole purpose is for every one of us to leave this building knowing you were in the presence of God. Yes. Somebody say amen, please. Listen here. You're, th this is not a social gathering. This is not some place you just come, you know, and say, oh, I did, my, I did my four hours of duty. 
Honey, you may be here for four hours, but I ain't going to be here for four hours. I did my duty. You know, I went to church. I was a good little Christian. That means nothing. What means something is, did you get touched and changed by God? You know, I want you to understand something. When you are in church and God is doing something and he stops the service and interrupts it with a message in tongue and the interpretation of that, it is for the purpose of edifying us. And if you give the message, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, right where we are, in the 13th and 14th verse, says this, Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. So the ultimate responsibility for a message in tongues, not an intercession in tongues, the purpose is or the responsibility falls back on one person, the person that gave it. If God allows somebody else, hallelujah, he's bearing witness with himself. If not, it is the ultimate responsibility unless it has been declared as a time of intercession from that particular person. If you understand that, say amen. Amen. And so what we've got to understand when we hear messages, we don't automatically just jump to the fact that Oh, that was a message. We got to stop and wait. Sometimes it's just intercessory coming out of the spirit of man. Please say amen to that. So once I understand that I ultimately have to be responsible for what I give, that will stop the foolishness and the blurting out and the Do it whenever I feel like it because the Bible said the prophet, the spirit is subject to the prophet. So what does that mean? That means when something starts to happen inside of me spiritually, maybe I'm getting a word from God of knowledge or a word of wisdom for somebody or I'm getting a message in tongues or a prophecy. I don't need to do it at that moment. I need to wait till God says, now. And if you'll notice most of the time here at church, not all the time, but most of the time when God is ready to speak, we'll take a pause. We'll say, wait a minute. We just want to wait a minute. God is up to something here. We want to let God be God. Why? Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth is established that not only works for the prophecy, it works for the timing of the prophecy as well. Somebody say amen, please. You see, so when you come to church, you come expecting it to be run decently in order, not like a bunch of crazies running around all the time. Somebody say amen, please. See, and and in reality, if you stop and think about it, God uses the gift of tongues to speak to us as a prophecy. He says, if you'll do this or do that. So it's a form of prophetic utterance. It's a form of the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, all combined into a message in another language. And that other language is the language of angels or men or whatever the case may be that God has granted unto you. So when we come to church, we understand that God is doing this thing called a gift of tongues or gift of prophecy and... It begins to motivate us and edify us to be more and more and more like him. So some of you have actually sat here in the church with some kind of stirring going on and it was God trying to prompt you to give a message in tongues, to to give a word of prophecy, and we have a whole way to do that. If God wants to move on you and you feel he wants to edify the church, all you got to do is come talk to me. Come talk to Pastor John. Come talk to the different pastors here. Say, I believe I have a word from God. Don't just jump up and shout out and run around this building like a crazy. You know, because the moment you do that kind of stuff, you disqualify yourself. Please say amen to that. You know, if I get up here, oh, the Lord says. 
That's a new dance move I just learned, Bill. <laughs> oh, the Lord says, <laughs> I disqualify myself. And besides that, I look like a nut, I taste like a nut, and I am a nut. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like a nut doesn't qualify for that. God does things sacrificially and sacred and holy, not to make you jump up and down and shout like you're crazy, but to simply speak from his spirit into your spirit. Somebody please say amen. I don't need to act like a crazy to allow God to use me. When we were talking last week, I've told you of the times that we've been in different Pentecostal churches. They not only did it for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I've seen them do it to get healed and everything else. And they take somebody, I've waited a long time to do this. <laughs> That's it. You know, I said, come on, brother, you can get it. Come on, brother, you got it. Yeah, you got it, brother. The moment you do that to me, let me, just, let me just tell you where I'm at. The moment you do that to me to get me to get something from God, be forewarned. I'm going to punch your lights out. God don't need to do that kind of crazy stuff. God doesn't need to do that. God is a God of love, and he can heal him. <laughs> Paula told me to do that to you because she wanted to get back at you. <laughs> you don't need to do that. God cares about you. God loves you and God is going to minister to you. Somebody say amen. So why do we even need this gift? Why do we need it in church? Why do we need it in our own personal lives? Here's why. Because it bypasses our brain and all of our thought processes and moves us into the spiritual side of who we are. Because truthfully, just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is a triune being, so are you. You are body, soul, and spirit. Your soul and spirit will pass from this world and go into the next and be with God Almighty. It's, and there, watch Jesus sit at the right hand of God the Father and who knows what else because nobody's ever came back with a video to show us. Amen. This body will stay here and deteriorate. You know why? Because there's a new one waiting for me there. Amen. And I'll tell you what my body's going to look like. <laughs> you remember Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was buff? He gonna look puny next to me. And I'm gonna get rid of all this. Do you know why? Now, let me tell you why, so you understand this. When I get to heaven, I will have fully the mind of God with no, no restriction or hindrances whatsoever. Are you with me? Amen. While I'm here on earth, he keeps putting knowledge and revelation into my mind. Well, over the 78 years that I've been alive, he has put so much knowledge into my brain, I can no longer store it up here, so it has run down here, and it is now stored right here, all that information to make room. <laughs> so you're looking at probably one of the smartest men you've seen in a long, long time because I'm storing knowledge. Like you, you have no idea. <laughs> okay. So I get this gift and I'm praying in this heavenly language and now all of a sudden, I'm not doing the battles that I was doing before. 
And why aren't I doing the battles? Because contrary to popular belief, the devil cannot read your mind. Your mind is protected by Christ Jesus and the indwelling Holy Spirit. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Pastor. You know, I was just telling sister such and such the other day that I was going through this and before I knew it, the devil was attacking me in that area. Well, why? You shot your mouth off. He can't read your mind, but he can hear what you say. Watch this. I don't have a Martha here. Where's the Martha at? Uh, uh, You're too far back. Diana, I, I was really aggravated the other day at Frank Reeves over there. Boy, he's a real jerk. You know what I mean? See, I I shouldn't pick on the older ones that have been with me for a while because they know what I'm going to do next. (laughs) I'm sorry, but you you don't know what's happening. (laughs) Uh, Boy, uh, Frank Reeves, he did this to me the other day. He's a real jerk, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. (laughs) Hey, Frank. Frank, our assembly man said you were a real jerk. (laughs) That's that's okay, Frank, because you never liked him anyway. (laughs) See, here's what happens. When we vocalize what those things are that we're struggling and, 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 and battling, to other folks other than directly to him, then the enemy hears those things and he's on it like a flood. It's kind of like Amazon or Facebook. You ever on Facebook or Amazon go and look for something, a gallon of paint, a a hair dryer, whatever. It doesn't matter. You looked on it or you clicked on something on Facebook and within the next 10 minutes, you get flooded with hair dryers or cans of paint or Lowe's is contacting you and Home Depot is offering you all the paints that are on sale. It's just like the enemy. You know, when you bring it out, he's on it and his demonic forces are gonna torment you and trouble you. When you're going through tough times, talk to somebody that's spiritual. Because the Bible says if you take it to somebody who's spiritual, if I take my battles to him, it says confess those things to one another and then you will be set free. When I said and trust him and share with him the battles that I'm going through, He'll keep it safe, I'll keep it safe, and the enemy will have no authority over me. Somebody say amen. And I want you to understand, every one of these ministers that you see here, Pastor Tony, Pastor Ron, Pastor Matt, Pastor Tito, Pastor John, who else am I met? Pastor Steve, Pastor Bill. I'm gonna tell you something. I've tried their spirits. I've tested them. And I'm telling you, you can trust them. You can believe that when you go to them, they're not gonna be blabbing all over the house about what you're going through. They're gonna get on their knees and they're gonna intercede for you and you're gonna get your breakthrough. Why? Because that's what God's word says to do. It doesn't say run all over and tell everybody. Hello? And you might as well understand something else in, these, in this last closing hour or two. I make you all nervous, don't I? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Pass out the bottles. <laughs> There's three levels that God ministers to us on and deals with us on. The level of want, the level of need, and the level of exceedingly abundance. God is not as concerned with what you want as he is with what you need. 
because he will always exceedingly abundantly provide more for you in what you need than what you want. Hello? I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me carefully. If you're single right now, listen to me carefully. Some of you want a husband. Some of you want a wife. Some of you want a companion. Some of you saying, what are you talking about, Pastor? I'm happy I'm single right now. Okay, listen. Some of you want a husband. Some of you want a wife. Listen, listen carefully. That's what you want. But God knows what you need. And if you jump ahead of him into want over need, you get what you got. Don't be going back and complaining to God. God, why didn't you tell me he was a... God's going to say to you, because you didn't ask me, dummy. (laughs) See, God wants to meet your need. And the person that you're looking at or the thing that you're looking at that you think will meet your need may be only fulfilling your want and God doesn't do it, so you say, boy, God didn't hear my prayer. He doesn't like me as much as he likes her or him. But the reality is, in the need, he can be exceedingly abundant. He can't do that in the want. So I tell you, I've told you this before, if you're single and you're looking for a husband or a wife, If you'll stay steadfast to God, he'll walk through those back doors. She'll walk through those back doors. Because you know what? God, contrary to popular belief, knows where you are every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And I can guarantee you, there has been husbands and wives, potentials, walk through these back doors and you weren't here on the day because you were tired. If I can just get to church. Bow your heads with me. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Father, we thank you for your promises. Lord, we just lift up your name. All over this building, can we just give him thanks? We just tell him, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for all the protections you've granted me. Thank you, Lord, for all the promises you've given. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just, there's no other words other than thank you. We don't know what else to say. God, sometimes it's so frustrating because we're so overwhelmed with your goodness, your exceedingly abundance, that we don't know what to say other than thank you, and it seems so insignificant. But God, you know our hearts and you look at our hearts, and it's in our hearts where change takes place. So I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the blessings of that. And I give you honor and praise. Maybe you're here this morning, right now, this very moment, and you're a candidate for a heart change. Maybe you're here right now, and what you've seen and what you've heard this morning did something on the inside of you And now you know that you've got something that you need that's not being fulfilled in all the things that you've tried and ventured in. What that is is a God-shaped hole that needs to be filled only by God. So if you're here this morning, and maybe you thought you knew God, maybe you're here this morning and you thought that you had a relationship with him, maybe you're here You had that relationship at one time, but something slipped away. 
But you know this morning, this very moment, that something in your heart needs to change. Something in your heart needs to be touched. Something in your heart needs to be exchanged for what's there because what's there is not fulfilling or giving you the fullness of purpose in life. So I want to pray one final prayer as we close the service today. And that one final prayer is this, that you would know him and that you would understand him and that he would walk and talk with you while you're here on this earth when you need him the most, that he would be by your side, never leaving you or forsaking you. But in order for me to include you in that prayer, you just need to tell me. And the way you're going to do that is right there where you're seated. When I ask you, you're going to just slip your hand up. That's going to let me know that you want to be included in our final prayer for today. That your heart will be changed and you will accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or you will return to him because you have been away and distant. And you want that change to take place in this day. So if you're here right now, you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, or you're here right now, and you did, but you kind of got distracted and pulled away from him, but you know that right now you want that to change, and you want to come back to him, or you want to make him the Lord of your life for the very first time, and have him help you through the rest of your life here on earth. And when you depart from here, you're going to heaven instead of hell. And that's your desire. And you want to be included in this prayer right now, right where you are. Put your hand up in the air and I'll include you. Thank you. Who else? Someone else, quickly. Someone else. Thank you. Thank you. I know there's some other ones because the Lord is tugging on my heart for that. This is not a time of embarrassment. This is a time when your life changes. This is a time right now that will give you a Bible, that will pray for you, that you will have a personal relationship with God and you'll never ever be the same again. That this is the moment right this second that heart changes take place. Anyone else here quickly? You know, my heart right now is being torn and I don't want to be, be late this and, and, and beat you up, but there's somebody else here. Your life is in danger in future days, and you have a chance to change that right now. If that's you, please, right where you are, just slip your hands and let me include you in this prayer. Last chance. Father, I thank you for the one that has made you the Lord and Savior of their lives. I thank you that this day the changes were made. And I thank you, Lord, that we now welcome them into the fullness of what you have for them in the body of Christ. And I give you glory for that right now. And so, Father, have your way in their lives and let them be everything that you have destined for them. Jesus' name, amen and amen. Stand up to your feet with us. Hi, this is Pastor Myers. I pray you enjoyed our broadcast today, and I wanted to let you know that our church family would love to have you join us here in our sanctuary for one of our weekly services. Every Sunday morning, we have dynamic worship, powerful preaching, an awesome children's church, and we see the power of God as he ministers to his family. Our Sunday services begin at 11 a.m. Then on Wednesday nights, we have ministries for the entire family. We have adult worship and Bible study. It's a night packed with the presence and power of God. And that happens at 715 every Wednesday night. For more information about New Life Church, you can go to our website at newlifeoutreach.org. There you'll find all the information you need to be part of our great church. And you'll see what God is doing in the lives of our families. Until our family meets your family on our next broadcast, may God richly bless you and yours.